Hello and welcome to another PWN Design Studio tutorial. <clears throat> I apologize for that. Anyways, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually talk about how to generate Watson reports so you can actually help quad spinners dev team and support staff fix your issues. So if you go onto their forum or you go onto Facebook or anything like that and you just complain about a bug but you don't provide anything for them to look at, all you're doing is just complaining and that doesn't help you and it doesn't help them. So the best thing you can do in any given situation is generate a Watson report. It would, I bet you anything that Quad Spinner would rather have a million Watson reports than one person making a forum post and not providing a Watson report where they're just complaining about a bug. Um, so you have to be you have to be willing to help them to help you if that makes sense. And complaining or just outright spamming the forms or anything like that with hey this is broken it needs to be fixed without providing any kind of context or any kind of build or system information isn't going to help anyone so to generate a Watson report anytime you run into a bug or a crash or anything like that it's super easy when you download and install Gaia it also installs Watson and the best way you can do it is to go to your start menu and look for Watson you can it'll either be in the recently added apps if you just installed Gaia or you can just type in Watt or Watson and it will bring it up I actually pin mine next to Gaia so I can easily open it so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and as you can see here it brings up the Watson diagnostic tool now be careful it'll tell you that uh, it'll analyze the logs and the crash dumps to create a diagnostics package. Um, it will also close Gaia. So if you are in a situation where you can save your your scene that you're working on, do that before you generate a Watson report. If you don't, it'll close Gaia, you'll lose your work. So um, if you're in a situation where you can, because not all bugs in Gaia create a crash, you can actually end up saving your work before closing Gaia. There are two things you can do here. You can either run the report as is right now, or you can perform the optional diagnostics. If you click on what is this, it'll tell you that it's just, you know, it's, um, if you're facing issues with specific nodes or if you're instructed by the by a technical support engineer, um, and you can ignore this in most situations. So you can run it now or check this. It'll include like a benchmark test and a few other things. All of it is non-personal information, so you don't have to worry about them gathering personal information. It's not going to do that. It'll grab like system information and system event logs, uh, but that's not going to that's not going to be like personal information. So you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, I almost always check this, just because it's nice to have as much information as possible so they can fix the issue. But you don't have to. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. As you can see, it closed Gaia, and it's just going to run through all of this right here. Um, and then it's going to spit out a zip folder. So it doesn't take long. On my computer, it only takes, you know, just like a, less than a minute. Um, it just depends on how much you have in your crash dump location, things like that. Um, and it's going to be different for everybody, but mine, it doesn't take very long. And as you can see here, it says it's finished. It was created successfully, and it, give, it gave you this log file uh, or this zip file, and it put it on your desktop. And then it tells you to submit it to the quad spinner uh, dot com forward slash support uh, site and I will break down in my opinion it's not endorsed by quad spinner at all but in my opinion the best way to get the support you need under any given circumstance so go ahead and close that and then let's go ahead and open up the community forum here so in my opinion when you run into a bug inside of Gaia submit it as a ticket and the reason why is because it's a ticket that will always be open until it's closed. If you submit it to the bug section and the community forums, obviously it's there for a reason. Quad Spinner wants you to utilize it to report bugs. But if you want the bug completely looked at and resolved, in my opinion, the best way is to do it is with a ticket supported through their support site or submitted through their support site. The reason being is because if you open a ticket, that ticket will stay open. It'll be there. It'll be con it'll constantly be staring at Quad Spinner support staff while it's open. If you submit it to the bug section in the community forums, you might get overshadowed by other people's bug requests. Um, but in any case, regardless of which way you do it, which which path you take, always submit a Watson report. If you open up a bug, like uh, a bug request in the community forums, and you don't submit a Watson report, 
that's not helping anybody. Like in this one, yeah, this is nice. You you broke down some critical bugs that you ran across. That's totally all right. Do that. But also submit a Watson report. If you don't submit the Watson report, there's nothing for Quad Spinner to look at. So if you get onto their community form and you just say, "Hey, I'm running across this issue. It needs to be resolved because it's it's a critical issue." Okay, cool. I'm thank you for submitting it. But please submit a Watson report. It it, it doesn't help guy. It doesn't help Quad Spinner. And it doesn't help you because Quad Spinner has nothing to look at. Unless they already know the bug exists uh, and they know how to resolve it, they just haven't released the an update for it yet, you are not helping them help you. And I say this as somebody who has worked in the customer support line or, or uh, industry for a very long time. The worst thing you can do as a customer is say, my, my stuff is broken, please fix it. Okay, cool. When did it break? What were you doing when it broke? Um, have you encountered this issue before? Can you give me a timeline? Can you provide additional information other than it's just broken? Th those are like five major things that customers always forget to include, and it doesn't help us. And I say that because the job that I currently have, my, my full-time job, I'm a technical support engineer. I do a lot of engineering work, but I do have to help customers. I, I mostly find issues in code. Um, or in hardware, hardware and software that needs to be resolved. And I can only do that if I get key bits of information from the customer. If they don't give me that information, I have to reply back to them with that, with those requests for that information. And all that's doing is stalling the, how fast I can help them. If, and we have a breakdown too. When you submit a case, uh, at least with the place where I work, when you submit a case, it asks you for all of that information. And you wouldn't believe how often customers just overlook that information and don't submit it. And then they ask, why is this taking so long for it to be resolved? Well, that's because I had to reply in an email or a phone call, uh, preferably an email, because then they can go through the checklist that they shouldn't have ignored to begin with and include that information that they should have included already. And so now we have to wait, not only for you to reply back, but fill out the information that we already asked for to begin with and you chose to ignore. So when it, in the customer industry, a customer support industry, yeah, the customer should be helped as soon as possible and the customer is important. But not, but that doesn't mean that we can't come back and say, you need to provide this information because if you don't, we can't help you. That's the end of it. If you're not willing to help, help us help you, we can't help you as fast as you want. So not only do you not get to come back and complain about why something isn't fixed like in a, in a, in a hasty manner, but you didn't set us up for success, which means that you weren't set up for success. So submit a Watson report regardless of how many times you have to submit a bug on a community form. You can upload your Watson reports to the community form. Upload it every time. And if the, when you generate a crash or when Gaia crashes or you find a bug, doesn't matter, submit a Watson report. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how small or how large. Always submit a Watson report. You can do that as if you, let me log in here. That way you're not looking at the same screen forever. Um, let's go to, uh, let's see here. I can do a start a discussion right here. Um, upload a file right here, attach. It's super easy. Like we can take my, uh, uh, let's see here, the Gaia log right here. Let's open that up. Now it's uploaded. And then right here, um, choose your tags, whichever tags you want. You can be like, in this case, a bug and click OK. And then here, be descriptive. Um, and if you're just saying, I ran into an issue, that doesn't help anybody. What is the issue? That does, that That is the worst tag or worst description for whatever you're running into. You can say, Gaia crashes on node movement. That is better, but that still, that doesn't help because what's the node? Where were you moving it to? Were you trying to put it into uh, another, um, like, were you trying to put it into its own tab? Or were you trying to just move it on the, um, the node graph. So this would be better. Gaia crashes when moving a moving the 
erosion erosion node from the main graph to a sub tab it's long but it's descriptive that helps that is better than those other two examples and then here instead of saying please fix that doesn't help anybody either even though you have your Watson log uploaded that still doesn't help anybody instead you can say you can say something like when I am building a scene building I'm not gonna, I'm gonna ignore my typos when I am building a scene and moving nodes around it seems as though the erosion node being moved to a sub tab crashes Gaia for some reason that is better than saying please fix it if you're not like a coder or anything like that you don't know how to dive into issues like in the log files which I'm sure are proprietary and quad spinner knows how to analyze those then more than anyone else that is still better than anything and then at the end you can say I uploaded I uploaded the Watson logs if you need anything else please let me know because you don't know if they're gonna come back with something like hey can you try this or that you want them you want to leave it open-ended so that you can help them even if you're the customer you shouldn't be going into any support as a customer expecting them to just be able to help you immediately you have to leave it as a good customer you leave it open-ended that way the support the support engineer can come back and say hey thank you for this information you are detailed thank you for the logs but can you go ahead and give this a try that way they don't feel like they have to like not leave it open-ended as in like they need additional stuff from you because if you don't leave it open-ended then it's gonna make them feel uncomfortable asking you for more things if they need it leave it open-ended say please let me know if you need anything else it's super easy good customers will do that bad customers will say fix immediately that is a terrible customer and I am a customer myself I own Gaia I own a bunch of other applications I often go buy new things for anything right for 3d food like resources whatever bad customers will say fix immediately okay I can't fix it immediately nobody on this planet can fix any amount of bugs immediately they always take a little bit of time to research they take more information that might need to be gathered from the customer from the build file from the computer from a whole bunch of things bad customers will just expect support and fixes immediately nobody nobody on this planet is going to be able to do that all right unless you're some kind of technological god nobody is going to be able to fix things immediately and don't use things like ASAP either like if you say fix ASAP that is not going to happen either because as soon as possible can be tomorrow could be a week from now could be a month from now could be several years from now because who knows how many bugs are current tr currently trying to be fixed and this is just proper etiquette for anybody for support staff and for customers never use ASAP ASAP only works when you have uh, an obligation to meet relatively soon like within the next couple hours because and, and usually it's not anything to do with work it's usually to do with like social events so proper etiquette is never use ASAP never use fix immediately don't be uh, obligatory in your uploads and your responses be as resourceful and as uh, info informative as possible and whatever you do do not just submit a Watson report without information being provided so it, that is all my opinion of course quad spinner is going to have their own opinion but if I were to submit a bug report to, to the community forums I would be as descriptive as I can be I would always submit a Watson report and I would always leave it open-ended so I can better help the quad spinner support staff if I need to so anyways I, I go on a tangent because I am a customer myself but I have been working in the customer support industry for a very long time and nothing is more frustrating and the least bit helpful than customers who don't want to be helped 
Like they, they want to be helped. That's why they submit a case or they post to a form or something like that. But I know they don't want to be helped because they didn't provide me any information to help them. So whatever you do, just try to be as informative as you possibly can. Even if it, even if you don't know how to be informative as, as possible, at least try to give it a shot because they can always come back and say, hey, we need additional information, then they'll ask for it. And you should be able to provide it. Anyways, that's my tangent. Uh, that's how you generate Watson reports. Um, I'm going to be posting a few more videos probably throughout the day um, because I have a backlog that I was able to get to. But uh, I'll keep things uh, relatively, um, uh, I guess, spaced. That way people have time to be notified. I know multiple uploads in a day kind of overwhelms people and then things get buried. But that's how I operate because I have a busy life right now. So um, if you guys have any questions or if you have any um, requests or anything like that, feel free to join the Discord. It's growing. We just have a couple more people join, and I, I like the direction it's going. So feel free to join the Discord. Post as often as you want. Just try to keep it relevant to the Gaia and, and 3D stuff. I've already had to ban one person for uh, political like messaging and stuff like that because they didn't agree with the, how I want to operate the forums or the Discord. The thing is, is I'm trying to keep it 3 d related uh any 3d path doesn't have to be gaia exclusive it's i have stuff in there for cinema 4d for octane for corona uh corona rendering anyways not the virus um and if you keep it dedicated to those things you'll be fine so join the discord and uh i'll see you in the next video